So the biggest thing of all of this is to be prepared. Um, you don't need to walk into a situation and not be prepared. It causes nothing but more chaos and um, quite frankly, it scares the hell out of the patient and that's not what we need to happen. Um, so you have your OB kit on your um, trucks. Um, we have our own OB bag for um, on our trucks at um, where I work at. And uh, usually you're supposed to have your apron, your gown, or excuse me, your, um, your eyewear and be done of all this gear. But I'm here to tell you, <clears throat> as a seasoned medic, you don't always have that time. <clears throat> um, but for these purposes, we'll do this like we're supposed to. So we'll put our gown on um, and such. But first, you're gonna get the patient in her position. So if she's already on the stretcher, um, you're gonna want to pull her all the way down and have her butt or her pelvis sitting in this ridge here. Um, you're gonna try to make it as comfortable as you can for her, but it's gonna be a fast situation more than likely. Um, if it's not, then you just make her as comfortable as she can. The legs are gonna be more draped off than what this one is. Um, he's awkward, so we can't really um, manipulate him down, but just for, you know, just humor me as if his legs would be, or her legs would be um, down. And um, you would cover her, because the biggest thing of it is you need to provide privacy um, and be respectful uh, for her and what the situation is going to be. Um, so you're gonna have her, have her pants off. You're gonna check her for crowning um, and then prepare yourself for the delivery. So, and you'll talk to her this whole time. Um, Riley's gonna be my EMT partner um, for this simulation as well. And um, she's, gonna, she's gonna coach her and um, we're all gonna be team players and get this baby out of this league. So Riley's gonna have her PPE on. We're gonna simulate that, which is gonna be her gloves and such. Um, and then we're gonna put uh, stuff down. It could be sheets, but pretty much try to make it as sterile as you can. Um, there's not much sterility in our trucks, but you try to do the best you can. Um, so, we have her covered because all we're all you're really wanting to do is just expose the perineum or peritoneal area of her and this thing is not going to cooperate so um we'll have our gown on which i feel like lunch lady alice with this stuff on but because you, it, it gets pretty, pretty dynamic when it comes to birthing a child. Um, you have you have your gloves and your goggles on. That way, um, to be prepared. It feels like you're going into the operating room with this, but you really, in, in all actuality, you're really not doing this this way, if you want me to be honest. I've delivered four in the field, and this is not how we do it, but this is how we're gonna do it today. So, get your sterile gloves on, get your glasses on, and get prepared to catch this bad boy. So like I said, it's, you need to be prepared for what's gonna happen, um, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, like I said before, it would probably be of your best interest to have another truck come just because you don't know what's going to happen um, with mom or, or the baby as well. So she's gonna say she's um, feeling the urge to push 
Um, like I said, with the crowning, you're going to see the bulging of the baby's head coming out of the vaginal region. Um, you're going to already possibly, if you have time, already have her own cardiac monitor, um, IV, all that, etc. cetera, um, to possibly, if anything should happen with her, always have her prepared. But if you don't, it's okay. Um, she's going to feel the urge to push. Um, she's going to push. We're going to tell her at least push for 10 seconds and then breathe. And we're going to do this like three times um, and then go from there. So she's going to push and you're going to expose and hopefully the baby's head's going to come out and you're going to let her relax. <clears throat> And then you're going to ask her to push for 10 seconds. And I know this looks gruesome. And then by now you've got, you've got the baby's head out exposed. You're going to take your bulb syringe and you're going to always remember M be comes before N. So you do the mouth first, you suction out the mouth first, and then you suction out the nose out of each nair. So M before N, mouth and then nose. Um, she's going to continue to push. You're going to look, hold on a second, and make sure that there's no cord around the baby's neck. That's okay. If there is the cord around the baby's neck, you're going to have to slip it around with your fingers. That way you won't um, choke the baby. Um, I'm sure there's other words. Strangulate the baby. Um, but just try your best to get the cord around or around from its neck. Most of the time it's not. This is going to be the time it's not. So she's going to continue to push. You're going to just support its body, its shoulders, everything. And then the baby's going to come out like so, crying, hopefully. You're going to check and make sure. Again, if you need to suction, mouth, nose, and then you have the baby out. As you can see, he is still um attached to the umbilical cord and again i was not prepared my partner is going to hold the baby <clears throat> down and then we're going to clamp it <clears throat> at least two inches from its abdomen and such i can't see what you're saying though so you're going to clamp once here and then clamp again and then you're going to cut in between there it might take some time for her to have the um to expel the placenta and if so um it's not a big deal but you can massage her uterus her uterine area and that sometimes will cause the placenta to expel so anyway going back to that so you're going to end up cutting in between the two clamps and then there you have your baby you obviously are going to clean him or her up um, usually we have blankets for them a head warmer um, and then you're going to Hopefully, if mom will accept the baby, and normally they do, you'll go ahead and start breastfeeding, which is the best thing that can happen for both mom and baby. Sometimes that could even help with the delivery of the placenta. Um, but I have been in occasions where mom totally rejects the baby and you're left just holding and taking care of it. But with that being said, whenever the placenta decides to decides to come out, you're going to obviously wrap this in. We usually use the red sterile bags, put it in there, and um, take it to the hospital with us. Um, then you're going to clean mom up um, the best you can, and. Um, then obviously if you hadn't done the IVs and stuff like that then um that's when you would start but using a pad 
like she would use for her um, her monthly periods, just to have that over the area um, to control bleeding if she was to bleed. But again, I'm only discussing the um, imminent delivery. So there's that. Um, if you have any comments, I understand. And thanks for your time. It's a boy.